the bouncing ball, the pendulum swing, the waving flag, overrated! If you're an absolute beginner to animation, these are some other animation exercises I would also recommend to you. When it comes to learning animation, a lot of assignments like the bouncing ball, the pendulum swing, or the waving flag are ideal assignments when it comes to learning animation. And to some extent, I can also agree to that because it introduces some mechanics that are important to character animation and other types of animation in the future. But other exercises I would strongly recommend to beginning animators is introducing them to FX animation. FX animation consists of things like fire, smoke, water, electricity, explosions, particle effects, and CG animation. There are animators that highly specialize in FX animation only. But imagine if you were animating a character made out of fire or you wanted to add shadows on a character. A lot of those elements are from the practice of FX animation. So why would I introduce beginning animators to FX animation? And there's several points I can make. It allows for experimentation. And the thing about experimentation is that it breeds your own sensibilities and style. It gives you less limitations and the freedom to try the principles of animation while trying to break away from it. It encourages problem solving. And the way I would describe problem solving is how do I make it work and how do I achieve my goal with whatever solution I come up with, even if it breaks some rule. It allows you to break animation in a more abstract sensibility. And it's fun. You can be carefree about it. I would encourage you to sort of know the basics of your animation program. So I would encourage you to know how to make new frames, how to navigate between these frames, how to draw on them, and how to flip between them left and right. How to, how to make the exposures longer, meaning how long each drawing holds for, and knowing how to figure out the onion skin tool. So this allows you to see the drawings before and after. And I'll just tell my students, this is all you need to know, and we're just gonna move forward from here. Now, if you participated on my limited stream where I use beginning FX animation to learn animation, well, a lot of this is from it. And the first one I'm going to start with is the bee or the fly buzzing around the screen. Now, for this exercise, I'm really only just drawing a dot. Now, every time I hit a new frame or a new drawing, I'm going to draw the dot again, but at a different location on screen. As I add more empty drawings and empty frames, I'm going to draw the dot in a different location, but not too far away from each other, just like increments to show that you can actually follow the movement throughout. Now, I'm going to experiment with it. I'm going to make it zip around or gracefully follow a path. And you can see that I'm kind of experimenting with arcs and smoother pathways. And if you're new to animation, you might be discovering what arcs are without being told what that animation principle is. As much as I love to flip between my drawings, I'm just going to turn on the onion skin so I can see my previous drawings. Maybe I'll bump it up to three to four drawings so I can see the drawings before it and the drawings after it by three drawings. This is just so that I can see the relationship of how far each dot is from each other depending on the frame. And as you can see, you might soon discover what spacing is. Now, as you can see, I'm kind of experimenting with the form or the style of the dot. Sometimes I'll add a smear where I stretch the dot to give the illusion of a motion blur or a fast swipe. I'm starting to be a little more experimental with this buzzing fly. Okay, so if I play it right now, we see a dot that just flaps around and moves around. But you know what? Let's give it a bit more character. I'm going to go back to my previous drawings and then I'm going to draw little wings. Give it the effects treatment here. So there are times when, you know, one drawing has the wings up and then the next drawing after that, the wings are down, giving the illusion of flapping. And I'll just repeat this every after frame. Sometimes I'll draw multiple wings on just one drawing and it kind of gives the illusion of a really fast motion blur or a smear. Again, giving the illusion that it might be flapping faster than what the human eye can see. But we can sell that idea with animation. And as I keep working on it, I can play with the stylization of it. I can play with the timing, giving it some more experimentation, stylization, and a lot of my own voice in this B you know, sparking a bit of my own creativity rather than trying to make a pretty solid bouncing ball. The next one I'm gonna do is kind of like a debris hit. So imagine a bullet hitting the ground and you see specks and dust and little pebbles just bursting right off the source. So as you can see, I'm animating the straight ahead and I'm using black little specks to indicate dirt bursting from the ground. Notice how from the source, I start out with big explosive movement and as I get closer to the end, 
it starts to slow down. The little pebbles start to slow down in movement, and it also starts to shrink and dissolve, signifying the end of the action. Now, it's not the end after this. I actually go back to the beginning frame of this animation and start adding more effects and keeping track of that, and I'm gonna use a different color. Now, you can choose to do these on a separate layer if you want to, but I'm just gonna go back to the first frame of the initial layer that I worked with and just add on top of it. For the red lines, I'm kind of going for this flare fiery burst. It kind of starts off with circles and then it also starts to break apart and dissolve as the animation goes on. Then I'm going to repeat the same cycle where I go back and now I'm going to choose a different color, maybe something like brown and focus on figuring out the animation for an improvised smoke, wisps of smoke. And I'm not drawing full shapes with full form. I'm really just describing these with lines. And this might be a great way to start if you're starting FX animation for the first time. And of course, I'm going to keep doing the same thing over and over again, going back to the first frame, adding more effects. Like, I'm just choosing to focus on one thing at a time. The first one was the first black lines, then second was the red lines, the third was like the brown lines that kind of represented smoke. And then I'm going back to, let's say, black or another color to maybe add more pebbles. You know, maybe have some pebbles bounce off the ground. When I did this demo, it wasn't planned on what I was going to do. I was just adding more and more on top of it just to show the power of experimentation using FX animation. Like what if I use the knowledge from my bouncing ball exercises in this effect where I have like a fireball or a few fireballs just bouncing away from the source and you can actually see and track those fireballs. If I go back and play it, there's a lot of stuff happening with this FX animation already. I could save this animation and use it as stock effects if I want to reuse it for a future scene or a future shot. And speaking of making effects to build upon each other, here's a ripple effect that I did. And I started with a circle that started from the source, so kind of indicate where the effect starts. You know, you can mark it in one layer, like a red dot, like I'm doing here. So it's a ripple effect. I'm starting in the middle as a little dot and it expands into a circle and that circle starts to slow down and it breaks apart. The lines break down, indicating that it's ending, it's dissolving. And of course, I'm having the onion skin on for the previous few drawings just so that I can see the spacing between all of my previous drawings. I'm not necessarily flipping here. I'm just gonna use the onion skin just so that you can see how I think about slowing down my animation frame by frame. Okay, so after I did the circle, you know, the beautiful thing about digital medium is that you can find ways to cheat things using some of the digital tools. So for this one, I duplicated that same animation, offset it a bit so it started at a later time, rotate it a bit so it feels a bit more asymmetrical to the previous animation, and have it start a frame or two later. Now we have two ripples. I'll duplicate that, repeat the same procedure. Now we have three ripples. Each ripple is a different layer. Now I'm going to merge all those layers together so it's all in one layered animation. And now we have a full ripple effect. Then I can duplicate these and offset it at different places in the animation so it looks like we're looking down at a pond, it's raining and there's ripples happening everywhere. Now we have FX animation on top of an FX animation. And imagine this, I could save this as a stock footage, I could just save this in the library where I can reuse it later. Like imagine if I wanted to use this effect and put it into perspective. I'll flatten the animation with all those ripples combined and skew that animation into perspective so now it looks like we're looking in 3D. So imagine if you had a background, it has perspective, there's a set, there's a character on it, and you want the ground to have a bit of rain effects or rain texture happening, here's how you can do it. Instead of me trying to animate the ripples in accurate perspective, I'm just handling it all at once in a top-down view that makes it easier for me. And that's another great thing about FX animation, you know, with experimentation, it helps you find ways to cheat something, it helps you find ways to work smarter, and to do a lot of problem solving. How do I make something look effective with a method that is effective and not super hard to do? So the one with the debris and this ripple effect, I'm basically demonstrating that if you just focus on one thing at a time, you can end up with something that looks so complex and vivid, even though behind the scenes, it was actually really simple to do. Here is me doing a spark effect, and it's kind of similar to how I did that debris gunshot where things start from source, it explodes, and little bits and pieces bounce away. Now, as you can see, I'm doing a lot more experimentation. So now I'm implementing smears, so you can see some lines just kind of stretch out to signify that spark, that motion blur with those sparks. You can see some streaks happen sooner than the other, just to have a bit of that asymmetry. 
And I'm being more creative and expressive when I want to tackle something like lightning. And the thing from my experience animating lightning is that it's kind of unpredictable. It's streaks and lines that kind of branch off like trees, but they kind of like, you know, jerk and tweak at very irregular patterns. And I kind of wanted to capture that. And, you know, sometimes some of the lightning actually flickers on and off. So as you can see, some of my lightning effects or some of my lightning drawings kind of disappear for one frame. And then for the next frame, it appears again. And then another frame after that, it disappears again. Then the next frame, it's a completely new frame in the animation. And that's the thing I like about FX animation. It allows you to be more creative in terms of problem solving. Now the next one I tried animating was a smoke, a cloud of smoke just dissolving in air. Now the interesting thing about this is that I was just going to do a single pass, just animate smoke and get it done. But as I was animating this, I was actually having a lot of difficulty. You know, part of it is because I don't really draw smoke a lot, I don't really animate smoke a lot, and the whole broccoli smoke cloud effect is kind of new to me and I'm admittedly not great at it. So what you're seeing here is my attempt of animating smoke from the get-go, having the drawings and lines clear enough without having to do multiple passes. I was just trying to animate smoke well. Like I thought about all the things that could make animation appealing, like asymmetry, having things offset, having shape language, uh, you know, form differently than other parts of the animation designing what the shapes look like as smoke breaks apart or how some of the streaks kind of remain or stick to each other like glue. And again, thinking about the style and design of the smoke. Now the problem with that approach from my experience, and some people are really great at this, but for me, I was trying to solve too many problems at once. So I was getting creatively overwhelmed. So I wanted to try again, but with a different approach. So instead of trying to animate or draw perfect smoke from the beginning, what if I started out with a gesture or an idea of how the smoke would play out? So as you can see, I'm animating circles and blobs. I'm not really thinking about how the smoke looks. I'm not really thinking about the design aspect of the smoke or how good the drawing looks like. I'm really just trying to capture the feeling of how I want the smoke to feel. So as you can see, I'm just animating circles or little bubbles that kind of clamp together and eventually dissolve. And once I have that figured out, this is when I start a new layer. And this is where I start thinking about the design of the smoke, how the smoke looks like. And as you can see where the bubbles or the circles that I did initially are clamped up together, this is where I think about how the cloud can look like. And when those circles break away, then I can start thinking about how the cloud or the smoke looks like when it starts to break apart. So as you can see, I started with just animating the gesture, just trying to figure out the animation aspect of it, just how things feel, just how I want the animation to play out. And then on another pass, like tie down animation, this is where I started thinking about the design. This is where I started thinking about the visual language of the smoke. So yeah, this FX animation exercise allowed me to find new solutions or new ways to work with something, how to solve something and how to move forward with it. Now I'm going to do one more and I'm going to take what I learned from the last bit of animation I did with the smoke to this fire effect. So I'm going to start out with animating a gesture for the fire, how the fire feels like rather than how the fire looks like. I started out with this gesture of a waving red line, kind of like a waving flag or a blade of grass just waving left and right. And I wanted to have it flicker at high speed. And I would have these little red dots that kind of dissolve into air at the top of the red line gesture, kind of signifying or resembling the embers just kind of dissolving. And if I were to play the animation, it does feel like a little flame just flickering around with little bits of particles just dissolving into the air. Now, on another pass, like I did in the previous animation example, then I start adding the visual language of what this fire could look like. And this is all entirely up to you or the art design of the project that you're working on. I'm just using a generic fire look, shapes that resemble fire and little shapes that resemble like the little particles just dissolving in the air. But look, I've already figured out the fire animation on that rough gesture pass. So all of this is just me being experimental with the visual look. I'm thinking about underlighting. I'm thinking about shading. So I'm implementing some of that in this pass. And again, this is why I love FX animation. It allows you to be experimental. It allows you to, and then you move on to the next, finessing some other stuff or adding some new elements to it. And this is why I think FX animation is a great way to learn animation, especially for beginning animators. And sure, there is the bouncing ball. There is a waving flag. These are great animation exercises to introduce some mechanics or some philosophies and concepts from animation. 
But with effects animation, you can go a step further because you can also implement the things you learn from the basic animation exercises like the bouncing ball and implement it in effects animation where you can be a lot more creative and experimental without having to worry too much about the tight rules. And that can lead to you having your own animation style. And you know what? I think effects animation should be implemented in a lot of animation courses and a lot of animation teachers should actually introduce effects animation to their students. Anyways, that's all. Bye. Interested in learning hand-drawn animation or learning how to finish an animated shot from beginning to end? Have a look at the store where you'll find the complete introduction to 2D animation video course, tutorials, and other resources. Learn classical animation approaches, drawing, lectures, techniques, and other process videos. Visit the store through the link in the description below.